Hello and welcome to the third in our series of How Do I? Professional Development Seminars. In this session, we'll be covering the Outcomes Tool in Moodle. This tool will become more important as we begin embedding our course outcomes and key assignments into the companion sites as part of our continuing program assessment efforts. It's important that you know how to use this simple tool before it becomes mandatory. In today's training, we will look at the differences between grades and outcomes, the outcome structure in Moodle, create a standard scale, link it to a course outcome, and then associate that with an assignment. Finally, we'll look at the gradebook to see how we can examine our outcome results. Outcomes are the overarching endpoints for a course or program. They're what the student should be able to achieve at the end of the period of instruction. Outcomes are typically far broader than any of the assignments associated with them. As such, it's difficult for any one assignment to completely encompass a course outcome. Assignments result in grades within the course. Good courses have rubrics associated with assignments that objectively outline the work that is to be done and how that work will be graded. Perhaps a better way of looking at this is, it's how a student's work will be translated into points in the course. Please realize that grades do not measure outcomes, but the successful completion of the tasks in the assignment. Grades, therefore, are a measure of student success in doing the assignment. Because assignments can have elements that may have nothing to do with the linked outcomes, such as timing, spelling, APA format, completeness, assignment grades in and of themselves are not a strong indicator of outcome achievement. That's why the feedback line in our model does not go all the way back up to the outcomes. Assessments involve the often subjective judgment by a teacher of the student's achievement of course outcomes. In a sense, the assessment tries to determine if the student knows what to do in a given situation, more than how well he or she actually performs in an instance of that situation. An instance is really just another way of defining an assignment. In the assessment, an instructor is measuring learning the student's ability to achieve the outcomes. In this case, the feedback loop does go all the way back up to the course outcomes. Given this is our working definition of outcomes, let's see how Moodle's tool has interpreted them. There are two components in Moodle's outcome tool. The first component is the scale. It's how we will measure the outcome. Generally considered to be a blunt instrument, it is similar in nature to the performance columns in Moodle's rubric tool. We will discuss scales in depth in just a few moments. The second component of the tool is the outcome itself. While we can use any level of outcome in the tool, institutional, program, or course, most generally you'll be using the course learning outcomes with this tool. Each outcome is similar to an individual criterion row in the rubric. Both the scales and the outcomes can be set up to be custom, meaning they're only available within a given course or standard, meaning they can be assessed in any course within a given site. Generally, outcomes should be custom, while scales are often best made as standards. The same scale can be used for multiple outcomes in multiple courses, which is why making it a standard, rather than a custom element, is most sensible. Perhaps the easiest way to see this is by putting the two elements together in a rubric-like way. Here you see the same scale, good or bad, is used for each of the three individual outcomes. Moodle will not stack outcomes like this, but instead will look at each outcome individually. A scale is simply a measurement device, like a ruler. In much the same way that a good ruler must have the characteristics of being straight and having consistent markings, a good scale has certain characteristics that must be followed to make it useful in making assessments. Let's look at these. The scale must be balanced. There should be the same number of marks on one side of the neutral center line as on the other. Scales can induce bias if there are more marks available on one side of the balance point than the other. When building scales, there are choices to be made. The first one is whether you wish to force the assessor into making a choice. This is done by using an even number of choices. When forced choice is used, the balance point is found at the intersection between two choices and not within a single choice. Because of this, the instructor has to choose a condition. The performance is good or bad, but it can't be neutral 
as there's no such mark. In the event you do not wish to force choice, you can insert a neutral option. This forces the scale into odd numbers. The balance point is then one where no real choice has to be made. This can induce bias as the simple neutral or non-answer option gives the assessor an out where a judgment does not have to be made. Good scales are descriptive. Each choice is described well enough that an assessor knows what choice he or she is making. The terms used are balanced across the neutral point. Bad does not become horrible, while good is merely fair. Bias can be introduced through the choice of terms and an apparent lack of balance. Scales with just narrative descriptors can only be properly summed and a frequency percentage calculated as their mere ordinal measures. By adding numbers to the descriptions, a Likert-like scale can be created, which is assumed to be an interval-level measurement. The numbers themselves indicate that the spaces between each narrative are the same, in a sense converting words into numbers. Therefore, means and deviations can be determined from these scales. Scales should be simple to apply. Best practice is to use no more than five choices of performance level for each outcome. While some scales use seven choices or more, often the item being observed does not allow for such a refined assessment, which again can induce bias. When it comes to scales, simpler is often both more effective and more accurate. When creating your scales, keep these rules of thumb in mind. Because scales can be used in multiple situations, try to keep them general. In other words, use not within standards, rather than more than two millimeters out of spec, or acceptable writing, as opposed to no more than three spelling or grammatical errors. You're constructing an outcome scale, not a detailed grading rubric. There are a number of different ways to use the outcomes tool. The way we will be developing the content for this tool is one of the most logical, especially if you're starting from scratch, that is, without a common set of scales. To start, we need to create our scales. To do this, we look in the Settings block under Course Administration and choose Outcomes. On the Outcomes used in this course page that appears, there are two lists. The list on the right provides the available standard outcomes, while on the left we see the outcomes currently used in this course. If there are existing outcomes we wish to use, we click on the Add button to shift them over into our course. If there are no desirable outcomes available, we need to add some by using the Edit Outcomes link on the bottom of the screen. However, if we click that link at this point, we may end up losing our work if we don't have a proper set of scales already set in the system. So rather than clicking on the Edit Outcomes link at this time, we'll move over and click on the Scales link under the Settings Grade Administration on the side of the screen. On the Course Scales View page that appears, there are two subheadings. Custom Scales, those available and created only within this given course, and Standard Scales, those that are available anywhere within the site. Best practice is to create generalized standard scales that we can use throughout the site. In order for us to add a new scale, assuming none of the existing scales will work for us, we must click on the Add a New Scale button at the bottom of the page. Note that there are two required fields here, denoted by the red font and asterisks, the name and the scale itself. Enter a name that describes the scale. For example, we'll use Satisfaction, since we're measuring how well a student's performance satisfies an outcome. We will click on the checkbox for Standard Scale to make the scale available throughout the site. If we left this box unchecked, this scale would only be available inside this course. We then enter the scale, moving from negative to positive values, separating each value by commas. Don't use quotation marks. Save Changes, then returns us to Course Scales page. The new scale should be listed under Standard Scales. If it's not, if it's showing up under Custom Scales, 
click on the gear icon to edit and ensure that the click box for standard has been clicked. Save and the scale should appear in the correct place. Now that we have a scale, click on Settings, Grade Administration, Outcomes to open up our Outcomes listing page. Click on Edit Outcomes to enter the Outcomes page. To enter a new outcome, click on the Add New Outcome button. In the Add an Outcome page, there are three required fields, full name, short name, and scale. It's good practice to indicate the type of outcome as part of both the full and short names. We'll enter the fourth learning outcome from one of our courses as Hume 320 CLO 4 Compare the Play's Text to its Cinematic Representation and its short name as Hume 320 CLO 4. We will not click on the Standard Outcome box because this outcome is only applicable to this course. For scales, we will use the pull down and select Satisfaction. Note, we could use the Add New Scale link to have created Satisfaction, but we would have had to leave this page and so would have lost all the data on it. We will leave the description blank since the full name contains the full outcome. Some may question why the course name is included in the full name since the outcome is not standard and therefore only exists within this course's shell. As we'll show later, this data may be gathered up and compiled outside of the shell. The full and short names may be the only way to link the data back to the course. There are many courses that have a fourth learning outcome, but only one that is Hume 320. By clicking Save Changes, we return to the Outcomes page, where our new outcome is now listed under Custom Outcomes. At this point, all we need to do is associate this outcome with an assignment. Click on the breadcrumbs to take us back to the front page of this course. In a typical course shell, we would find where we want the assignment to go and using the Add an Activity pull-down, select Assignment. The Assignments tool will be covered in depth in a future lesson. We just wish to see how outcomes are associated with an assignment. Outcomes can be associated with almost all of the activities. We need to enter an assignment name and description, text into cinema comparison, and compare the written text to its cinematic representation, da 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 da. Scrolling down to the Outcomes block, we see that our new outcome is available. We click on the box to use it, then scroll down to Save and Return to Course. By clicking on the assignment name, we are brought into its grading page. Here we see a number of submissions that must be graded. Click on the link to View Grade All Submissions. Click on the gray pencil to grade the work. Notice that underneath the grade box, we have our outcome listed. Next to the outcome is the pull-down that is our scale. We can grade the work and assess the outcome simultaneously and click Save. Back on our grade sheet, if we scroll to the right, we can see not only the grade and whatever comments there may be, but also the outcome for each student. Let's use the Grading Action pull-down to see the gradebook. In the Grader report, we can see both the grade and the assessment of the achievement of the outcome. Note that the outcome has an average, even though it is non-numeric. Moodle assigns a number to each scale point and automatically averages the scores, returning whatever the narrative scale value is closest to the numerical average. If we wish, we can download the outcomes for further analysis. Using the pull-down, we ask the system to export the data into an Excel spreadsheet. Scrolling down to the Grade Items to be Included block, we will select None to clear the list, and then click on the Grade and Outcome for the assignment. When we click the Submit button, our preview shows that we will receive the student's name, personal information, and then both the numeric grade for the assignment and our scale assessments of their achievement of the learning outcome. In addition to exporting our grades and outcomes, from the gradebook pull-down we can get a list of the outcomes used in the course, edit our outcomes, or import outcomes from other courses. This last would be used if we were using program learning outcomes or institutional learning outcomes within Moodle. Note that we can also view the scales that are available to us and from that page add new scales to our system. 
That's it. We've managed to cover everything you want to know about the Outcomes Tool in Moodle in less than a half hour. Thank you for your time today, and we hope you found this helpful. We look forward to seeing you again in our next professional development training. Don't forget to take the quiz to ensure you get credit for the class. Have a wonderful day.